Hi, I'm Laura with Red Desert Violin. Today I want to talk to you about intonation, and I'm going to give you a shortcut to fantastic intonation. I, I know that intonation is the bane of many violin players, and we work really hard trying to improve our intonation because that is what separates amateurs from professionals. It's one of the things. Um, intonation also happens to be one of the top three priorities for a beginner. To me, the priorities for a beginner are your posture and form, your tone or your tone quality, and your intonation. Um, and intonation refers to how well in tune you are. So the shortcut to good intonation that I was referring to earlier is uh, called ringy notes. And it's just a simplified version of using the sympathetic vibrations of the violin to your advantage. I tried practicing this in very complicated ways. You just can't believe the, the hoops I jumped through to try to improve my intonation using this method. But Ed Kreitman really simplified it for me. Ed was my Suzuki teacher trainer at the Intermountain Suzuki String Institute. And um, he taught me about ringy notes. And ever since then, I think my intonation has improved greatly, and yours can too. So I'm going to demonstrate, um, well, basically, the ringy notes that you have on your violin, coincidentally, are G, D, A, and E. And it's no accident that those notes happen to also be open strings, because when you play an A anywhere on your violin, if it's in tune, it's going to vibrate sympathetically with your open A string, and that's going to give it a big, resonant, vibrate sound, hence the ringy notes. So um, the easiest way to work on ringy notes is with just starting with your third fingers, because those are probably the ringiest notes on the violin. Before we do that, I'm going to demonstrate some ringy notes on my third fingers so that you can hear the difference for yourself. So I'm going to just come a little closer so that I can have some help from my assistant. And I'm going to play a ringy three on my D string. That note name is G. And I've just so happens that I have a G string right here. And it's going to start vibrating like crazy when I get into the right spot. Okay, I'm going to have my assistant tap the G string to show you. I'm not playing the G string, but it's vibrating like crazy. Now we'll. Um, now I'm going to play it slightly out of tune, and you'll hear that the G string is not vibrating as much. Now let me get back in tune. difference. Now if you don't have a, an assistant standing by, you can test by stopping your bow on the string. You can hear that little after ring. That's the G string vibrating. But it's important, don't, don't cheat, don't go because anything's gonna ring if you take your bow off the string. You gotta stop the bow on the string to kill that vibration so that you can hear if any other strings besides the one you were playing on are vibrating. Now slightly out of tune. Still out of tune. I'm hoping the microphone is picking up on that because when you're standing here right under the violin, it's uh, quite striking. So those are your ringy threes. Incidentally, I should tell you, the third finger on the G string is not a ringy note because that, that note is C and we don't have a C string. 
So just practice your third fingers on the D string, on the A string, and on the E string. Go ahead and fish around. Get that violin vibrating, wiggle your finger just a hair, not too much because if you go three hairs instead of two hairs, then you're going to go too far. So I'm going to show you just a little fishing around. Bound it. Okay, now I'll fish around on the E string a little bit. A string vibrating like crazy. So now I will tell you all of the ringy notes on the violin, although you can figure them out for yourself if you know your violin notes, but I will tell you it's, uh, well I'll say them as I play them. Open G, first finger A, second finger B, oh I need to explain second finger B. Uh, the B, B notes, are ringy notes as well. We don't have a B string, but in simplified terms, if we had a higher string than our E string, it would be a B string. And I think that's probably all you need to know about that. It has to do with the overtone series, but just say if you had an imaginary string on top of your E string, it would be a B. So B is slightly ringy. Okay, starting again. Open G. First finger A. that I'm tiptoeing and only hitting one string at a time. That's very important in this exercise because if you accidentally touch another string with your finger, it can kill that vibration and then you won't know if you're on the ringy note or not. So I'm going to demonstrate that whole series of ringy notes for you one more time. And I will tell you, this comes straight out of Suzuki Book 2. It's called the Tonalizations Exercise. And many people skip it because they don't realize the value in it. I, I know, I didn't realize it until Ed Kreitman taught me, so here is the tonalization from book two in Suzuki. Sit on that note until your teeth are vibrating out of your head. Work with this exercise. Start learning to use it and listen for those ringy notes in your easier pieces like the Twinkle Variations or any of your earlier Book One songs and you will find that your intonation will improve dramatically. I'm Laura with Red Desert Violin and I hope you found this helpful. <laughs>